Hey everyone, Dean Giles here and thanks for watching this video which is our second video in our series on beginning rhythmic reading. Now if you haven't seen the first video I would urge you to stop here and go back and watch the first video. Make sure that you're familiar with all the content in the first video because we're just going to be adding information here. Um, so if you haven't seen the introduction to rhythmic reading part one the first video go back check that out make sure you're familiar with all of the note and rest names and also their relationships make sure that you're familiar with the time signature and how everything fits on the linear grid and also make sure that you're fairly proficient with um, playing through reading number one which can be downloaded from my website. So I'm just going to move ahead here and assume that you have looked through and are familiar with everything in the first video and in this video we're going to be adding another note value. We're going to be adding on the eighth note and the eighth rest in this particular piece that we're going to play at the end of the video. So by now you should have the study sheets uh, downloaded and you need study sheet number one, one A, two and three. And all of those should be downloaded from my website and you should be getting really familiar with the information on all those study sheets. Study sheet one, one A, two and three. Okay, so as we add the eighth note into the mix here in this particular video and into the piece that we're going to play at the end of the video, you're going to notice that and remember hopefully from the first video that the eighth note will receive one half of a count when we're playing in a quarter note meter. Now when I say we're playing in a quarter note meter, that means that there is a four in the bottom of the time signature telling us that the quarter note equals one count. That means we're in a quarter note meter, the quarter note receiving one count, and therefore because it takes two eighths to make one quarter, each eighth would receive one half of a count. So now let's look back at the example that we had with the counting system on top which was just what we would call one part counting and we'll look at that example with just the quarter notes underneath. So here you can see uh, one, two, three, four across the top are counting and then each one has one quarter note underneath and we remember this example of course from the first video and I'll just go ahead and clap it out uh, just so uh, we can have a quick little review here and it's just going to be very simple just one two three four okay and now we're going to add the eighth notes in so let's look at an example with the same counting on top and we're going to add the eighth notes in underneath now here you see a gap between the numbers, the counting on top, and you can see in that gap there's a note underneath. And this is the other half of the count, or the second half of the count, the other eighth note there. So we're going to go ahead and fill in a counting system on top of those notes that lie in between the numbers. And what we do here is we just add a plus sign and we use the word and to count those eighth notes that are in between the numbers. So now we have the counting system one and two and three and four and. So now we can put a count with every note that's in that measure or measurement of music. Now this could be called eighth note counting or in this case two part counting. So the one part counting was just counting the numbers and then two part counting is going to be counting one and two and three and four and because we're really counting two syllables or two things for each count the number and then the and. Okay 
So let's go ahead, I'm just going to clap out this particular rhythm uh, with all the possible eighth notes in the measure. So that's going to be very simple, just like this. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. So it's, as you can see, it's very similar to just the quarter note counting that we did in the first video. But now instead of quarter notes, we have eighth notes in there. And there are eight of them in order to be able to fill the measure because each eighth only takes one half of a count. So we need two of them just to make one count. And then all told, we need four counts. Okay? Now what happens when we start to put rests in? Let's put a rest let's say on the end of the two count or the second half of the two count. Let's take a look at that uh, example and then I'll clap or play through that example for you. So here's a rest on the and or the second half of the two count and here's how it goes. One and two and three and four and. So you can see that just like in the quarter note example in the first video, when we have a rest underneath the count, we're simply just not going to play. We're going to keep our count going, but we'll just not play when we see a rest. Let's put an eighth note in a different location. How about the and of three, or the second half of the third count? Let's do that one. One, and, two, and, three, and four and okay so i hope you're getting the idea there now what happens if we have an eighth rest that's actually on a number well, let's like let's take a look at that how about if we put an eighth rest on the three count for instance now again it, it acts just the same way as it would if it was underneath one of the and counts um we're just not going to play when we get to that third count but we will play the end of three because the other half of the three count, there is a note there. So we're going to play that or clap that in this case. So let's do that one. Here we go. One and two and three and four and. So I think by now you're getting the idea. Wherever you're going to see an eighth rest there, we're just not going to play. Okay, it's very simple. Now how about when we mix the quarter notes and the eighth notes. Now remember that a quarter note in this case because we're in a quarter note meter and there's a four in the bottom of our time signature. And remember the time signature, the top number means the number of counts per measurement of music and the bottom number indicates which one of the notes will equal one count. And in this case it's the quarter note because we have a four in the bottom of our time signature. So what happens when we interject or we mean when we mix the quarter notes and eighth notes together? Well again, remember that that quarter note is going to take up the entire count that it sits on. So if we have a quarter note on the one count, for instance, it's going to take the one, the number, and also the and or the second part of the count. It's going to take the entire count because a quarter note equals one entire count. Okay, so even if we count two-part counting, the quarter note's going to receive both halves of the count. Okay, it's very similar like in the first video when we had a half note and the half note took two counts, right? It took the one count and the two count if it was on the count of one or it took the two count and the three count if it was sitting on the count of two, okay, and so forth. So this is very similar. So remember that that quarter note now is going to last throughout the entire count of one, and then we'll continue with our eighth notes after that. So let's play through that example. Here we go. Ready? One and two and three and four and. Now, I hope you noticed that when we played the quarter note or when I clapped the quarter note on the one count, I held my hands together like I did with the half note in the previous video. And that was to indicate that that quarter note is lasting throughout the entire count of one. There's no rest there. 
it's the quarter note lasting throughout. Okay, let's move the quarter note around and let's just put it on the three count. Okay, it's going to be very similar, pretty much the same thing as we just did. Here we go. One and two and three and four and. So what you want to do now is you want to look at uh, the website and download reading number two and that's going to have the eighth notes in there and in the next segment when I come back we'll go ahead and play through reading number two together um, and I just want to do maybe one or two more examples here uh, with uh, some different uh, figures or some different rhythms involving the quarter note, eighth note, and eighth rest. So let's see, how about uh, an eighth note on the one count, an eighth rest on the and of one, a quarter note on two, and then eighth notes the rest of the way from three and four and. Let's try that one. So that would look like this. One and two and three and four and. Okay? So if you have any questions about this, uh, remember you can always send me an off, off an email. You can get in touch with me through the website. And uh, make sure that you're familiar with this. If you're having questions, if it's not really uh, making sense, go back, rewind, re-look uh, at this again, and hopefully things will start to click in for you. And again, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to send me off a message, an email, uh, through the website. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and help uh, answer any questions that you might have. So in the next segment, let's come back and read through reading number two. All right, so here we are in the play along section of this video. And I have reading number two set up here on a music stand. I have my metronome, my practice pad, and we're ready to go. Now, before we actually go through reading number two, uh, go ahead and kind of glance through, take a look, and see if there's anything in there that looks um, confusing or that you don't understand. Um, if also, if you want to, you could go ahead and write in the counting on top of the measure if that helps out on some of these. But remember that in the real world, when you see music like this, you're not going to see that counting written in on top. So, um, you know, you're going to have to kind of visualize that. Um, but if, you know, just getting started here, if you want to write that in on a few of the measures that might look a little bit confusing to you, I would go ahead and uh, do that. Before we play through this, I want to do one exercise with you, and that is to play all the notes that are on the numbers, for instance, four quarter notes in a measure, and then we'll do all the notes that are on the and counts, or the second half of every count. So we'll have one measure where there are quarter notes, and they're going to sit on all the numbers. And then another measure with all the ands are just eighth notes, or what we would call the upbeat eighth note or the offbeat eighth notes. So I'm just going to loop that around just so that you can get an idea of what it's like to play the notes, only the notes that are in between the numbers, okay? And I have my metronome set here for 50 clicks per minute. Okay, or 50 beats per minute, if you will. I'm going to start the metronome. And anytime I start the metronome, I always want to give myself some time to listen to the pulse and really get acclimated to the distance between the clicks. So that when I start to play, I'm really ready to play at that tempo. So give yourself some time there to get acclimated with the tempo. And then when you feel like you've got it, then you can jump in. So I'm going to give myself a one measure count off, and then I'm going to do the loop that I just explained to you with the quarter notes on the numbers and then 
uh, four eighth notes on the ends. And I'll just loop that around a few times. Might be a good idea to practice that along so that you're used to that when you get to it in the music. So here we go. One and two and three and four and 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 okay so I hope you noticed that the metronome was lining up with the numbers so we were hearing a quarter note click if you will or a quarter note uh, pulse from the metronome and then in between I was just playing those ands so we hear the click and then you hear the and or the the notes that are in between the clicks which would be the the ands in that in that particular counting system alright so let's get ready to do reading number two again I'll set the metronome give us a one measure count off and we're going to be counting two part counting all the way through one and two and three and four and all the way from the top to the bottom so play along and um, let's uh, have some fun and I'll see you at the end here we go one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and third line one and two and three and four and 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 one two and three and four and one and 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 two and three four and one and two and three and 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 last line one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three 
three and four and. Okay, how'd you do? I hope you did well with that. And if you have uh, problems, go back and try it again. Uh, also, you could go back and just watch the music go by as I'm playing it and try to make sure that you're understanding where I am on the page and you're following along. Some of the, um, uh, one, of the one of the tricks to being really a good sight reader or reader of rhythms is to keep your eyes moving forward so that you're not surprised by what's going to come next. So you always want to just kind of be looking ahead, especially when you get to the end of a line. Wrap your eyes around to the beginning of that next line and look forward so that you don't get caught up at the beginning of the next line. Remember, there won't always be a note on the one count. You may have a rest on the one count. So don't always assume that there's going to be a note there on one. So look ahead, make sure you're prepared to play the next measure, um, kind of zoom out and keep your eyes moving forward. And as you do well with this, once you get through this a few times and you haven't made any mistakes at the 50 tempo, 50 clicks or 50 beats per minute tempo, go ahead and move it up a little bit. And you can really use the metronome to help gauge your progress as you go faster and faster through this and your rhythmic reading gets better and better. Certainly these rhythms are going to sound a lot more fun and a lot more lively at faster tempos and you're going to enjoy playing through these things at faster tempos. But as we're learning how to read the music and read the rhythms, it's a good idea to play them correctly at first rather than fast. We can always add tempo or add being able to play them faster. That's not a problem. Playing them correctly is really the issue. We want to make sure we get it right, right at the beginning. Okay? So again, thanks a lot for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one on Rhythmic Reading, or the next one we have up on the website. And I uh, hope you're enjoying the videos. Again, if you need to get a hold of me, just go ahead and send me off something through the website. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and hopefully I'll be able to answer any of the questions that you might have. All right, so good luck with this, and I'll see you in the next video.